Today we're going to spend our time of communion in Mark chapter 10. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and turn there. And if you need a Bible, there are men that would love to pass these out. Just raise your hand and they'll give you one. And if you don't own a Bible, um, this one's yours to keep. (coughs) Last week in my reading, I was working my way through Mark and I came to a very familiar story. The story of the rich young ruler. It was one of those times in your Bible study where you're surprised by what God illuminates about himself in a section of scripture you practically have memorized. So I'm going to read that section and talk about what God showed me this week. Starting in verse 17. And he was setting out, he being Jesus, on a journey. A man ran up to him and knelt before him and began asking him, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your mother and father. And the young man said to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth up. And looking at him, Jesus loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go and sell all you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But at these words, the young man was saddened, and he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. I think this passage puts on display two marks of a heart for God. Let's look at it and see what the first mark is. The first mark is a right disposition towards God. Look again at verse 17. The rich young ruler knew that Jesus was different. In fact, he ran to Jesus amongst a crowd so that he could learn from him. He knelt and called him good teacher. In every respect, he was one that was eager to learn. He had respect for Jesus as a teacher and believed that Jesus could teach him something that was life-changing. The rich young ruler knew that Jesus had the way to inherit eternal life. That was something he could learn from Jesus, and he wanted to hear that answer. But Jesus answered his question with a question. Why do you call me good? Jesus doesn't ask this question to deny his deity. In fact, he is highlighting that the rich young ruler doesn't recognize his deity. And not only does he not recognize it, but he doesn't really get how good Jesus really is. Keep reading at verse 19. Jesus said, you know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your mother and father. And the young man said to Jesus, teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth up. Jesus highlights for the rich young ruler a standard of good, and the young man thinks he has met that standard. He is so far off in his mind on what good really is that the young man thinks he is good. He doesn't see his need for a savior. Think about it. What is the answer to the rich young ruler's question? How do you inherit eternal life? The gospel gives us this answer. You need to recognize that you are a sinner. There is nothing you can do to change your standing before a holy God. You need to see that Jesus is the only man that walked this earth with a sinless life and that him going to the cross as a substitute for you is your only hope. So you must put your trust in him and submit your life to him. The rich young ruler told Jesus that he wasn't close to understanding this truth. And his answer to Jesus' reminder, of, with his answer to Jesus' reminder of the commandments. So Jesus looked at him and felt love. Jesus felt love for this guy who had no clue of his place before Christ. Jesus saw a man that had no idea of his need, and he felt love. And out of that love, he showed him the second mark of a heart for God. The second mark of a heart for God is a right disposition towards this world. The rich young ruler wanted to know more. The rich young ruler knew of Christ, 
but didn't know who he really was. The rich young ruler showed him respect, and the rich young ruler obeyed what he knew. And the rich young ruler received many earthly blessings. But the rich young ruler was unwilling to treasure Christ over this world. A heart for God treasures Jesus over anything this world has to offer. Let's reread the end to this very sad story. Looking at him, Jesus felt a love for him and said to him, One thing you lack, go and sell all you possess, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But at these words, the young man was saddened, and he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. A heart for God treasures Jesus over anything this world has to offer. This man had great wealth, but it was meaningless in view of Christ. But this man didn't really understand that. So I'm going to ask you this morning, where's your focus? Do you look at who God is and see the holiness defied between us and him? Do you sit at the foot of the cross and meditate on what Jesus, the one who spoke the world into existence, did there? What do you treasure? What if you were put in the situation of the rich young ruler? If Jesus asked you to sell everything, give it to the poor and follow him, would you walk away dejected? Christians, there are times when we can be dejected. Yet if we put our trust in Christ to save us, we can also be like the demon-possessed father from the previous chapter and say, I do believe. Help me with my unbelief. This morning during communion, meditate on where your heart is and ask God to help you with your unbelief. But if you clearly, not in a moment of doubt, but clearly understand that you were one that would walk away, I want to talk to you for a minute. There are many reasons you could be here today, but I hope that you're here to listen to this next point. Christ went to the cross to show his love for you. There is nothing you can do in and of yourself, to gain eternal life. Jesus does show us the way to eternal life, and it is through him. We'd love to talk to you after this service. Any one of the elders, the person that brought you, anyone that puts their trust in God would love to share with you what God has done to them. So please reach out to us. But during communion, let the cup and bread pass by us. This is a time of worship reserved for those who trust Jesus. We're going to take communion on our own today, and then I'll come back and close us in a time of prayer.